is the Chevy Spark EV, the first EV hot hatch that you didn't even know existed? If you can't drop 40 to 50 grand for a Tesla right now, but you want EV performance, this may be the only car that even comes close to Tesla's power numbers. We're not only going to talk about foot pounds, we're also going to talk about aerodynamics, wheels, braking, suspension, upgrades, and all the other gadgets and gizmos that are going on with this vehicle. It's not the worst looking EV car, but I think it needs some help and I have a good idea of where I wanted to go with it. So just like Gran Turismo or Forza, I just went to town. We had to put some racing stripes, we had to black the wheels out, and we had to put some red caliper paint on. The chrome trim had to go, guys and girls. So we put some of that blackout tape on it, and it looks pretty good. I also got some of these vent shades, and they work really well too. Now that's great for appearance, but let's go back to the wheels. We've got a special 45 pound lightweight alloy wheel, and that's just for the Spark EV. The tires in the front are 185 55 15. They're Bridgestone Ecopias, and they're a low rolling resistance, and it's for the EV car to give it better range. The reason I wanted to talk about the tires first was because I believe that this is going to be your biggest improvement. A major issue is your traction. You can't go anywhere without lighting the one tire fire. Chevy gave the EV 195 55 15s in the rear to help with the performance and the extra horsepower plus the extra weight in the back for the battery. These days, with all the crash restrictions and all the beefing up of the A and B pillars, to come in under 3,000 pounds makes this car a lightweight. This has 127 more foot-pounds of torque than the Fiesta ST. Now to put that into a perspective, the original Gas Spark has 83 foot-pounds of torque, making the Spark EV one of the most potent sleeper cars on the road today. This EV has throttle response that is unmatched by any internal combustion car that I have ever driven. This thing is so quick that, you know, it's just rocket past me. Holy crap! It doesn't translate on camera, but the acceleration that I just felt was more than my 340 foot-pound of torque STI. I mean, that thing's got power, and that, thing, that thing's like a mini rocket sled. And because you have to shift gears in it, you lose that, lose those precious, like, I don't know, it's hard to explain. You lose that forward momentum when you have to shift. I don't care how fast you shift the thing. Where this thing just it just relentless it does not stop three two one yeah it, it, i mean it's out of here and the crazy thing about this this thing you can see that we're going so fast this doesn't just click up 35 36 37 it'll jump numbers because that's how fast we're accelerating it's incredible. The digital speedo can't even keep up. Watch, 37, 39, 43, 46. That's how fast we're accelerating. It's a grown-up RC car, so power, check. You've got all four disc brakes, 10-inch rotors, front and rear. The brakes feel fine when you're out on the highway or even when you're doing above like 30 miles an hour. But when you get to 10 miles an hour and under, the brakes are really bad, and I think it's because of the pad and rotor material choice. First, we're just going to change the pads out in a later video. It's really super touchy, and it's really weird. And it's just off-putting for a sec, but you get used to it. I'm but for now, we're going to take a look at the suspension. I believe everything is just like the gas spark. The springs were upgraded for the EV model front and rear for the extra power. Any aftermarket coilover kit for the Spark is only going to work for the front for the EV. And the reason that is is because the rear compound crank, when they put the different springs on there, it's a whole different setup. So your aftermarket kits will not work with the rear, but it's a front-wheel drive car. So you can dial the rear in by putting shims to get a good alignment. 
get good tires in the rear, and then you're going to be set, especially if you hook the front up. Being a front-wheel drive car, getting that front to hook up like that, it's going to do magic for you. The springs help the car out a ton. It is a major upgrade for what was a soft suspension to begin with. You can tell that the dampening is still not there, but that's something that the aftermarket can definitely help you out with. Just keep the rear as the compound crank and maybe put some shims in. This way you can get a good alignment for what you want on the rear and then hook the front up however you'd like with the aftermarket coilover setup. Steering is electric of course, but the steering wheel itself feels pretty good. If you got the lower trim, the LT1 like I did, it's not a leather wrapped steering wheel so I put this little like Alcantara cover on it and it does really well. LT2 comes with a leather wrapped steering wheel which is really nice. The weight of the steering itself feels pretty good. There's no dead spots, and it's got really nice short steering arms, so a little does a lot. Obviously, it's not meant for performance, either is the suspension, but it does a good job at keeping the power in check. Handling-wise, I went for it, and it actually hooked in the rain. It's got a proper rear splitter and full aerodynamic undertray. The whole entire underneath of the car is flat. It has EV only side skirts and the front grille has an active rocker system that shuts at high speed for aerodynamics. There are no openings besides that lower opening. All that together gives the Spark a drag coefficient of 0.326. Now, of course, in an EV car, this is all to extend the range. But these are on par with some serious sports cars. So you have to say to yourself, is the Chevy Spark EV a hot hatch? Get back at me, everyone. This is SVT WRC coming at you 2019. Smash, smash, smash that like button, guys. And we will see you soon. Support the troops. Hooray, hurrah, and yippee-ki-yay, mother...